What's up guys, I'm Antonio and welcome back to the Business Download of Clean Energy's EV Wrap-Up. This will be talking about the different types of electric vehicles and what makes them tick. Now while they're all referred to as electric vehicles, there are a few differences to explore. And before we get started, make sure to hit the like and subscribe button below. So it's about that time, let's get started. First up is the all-electric vehicle, otherwise known as a battery electric vehicle. These are fully electric vehicles with batteries that are recharged by plugging them into an electric power source that's connected to the grid. The driving range for an electric vehicle is anywhere between 100 to 400 miles depending on the model and the battery size. You'll probably recognize some of the most popular names out there, from the Teslas to the Chevy Bolts and to my personal favorite, the Ford Mustang Mach-E. There's a wide range of price tags for EVs. For starters, we have the Porsche Taycan Turbo S and the Tesla Model X Plaid. But on the more reasonable side, there's a Nissan Leaf S, the Mini Cooper SC, the Chevy Bolt EV, Mazda's MX-30, Volkswagen ID4 Pro, and many more. It's important to note that the US Environmental Protection Agency actually categorizes all these cars as zero emission vehicles because there's no direct exhaust or tailpipe emissions. Next up is the Hybrid Electric Vehicle, or HEV. Whereas EVs lack a gas engine, HEVs have both a gas-powered internal combustion engine and one or more electric motors. Hybrids achieve better fuel economy than traditional gas-fueled cars as they have two forms of power. The combustion engine can be smaller in size and the battery cuts off engine idling when not in motion. In mild or micro-hybrids, the combustion engine is the primary driver, with the electric motor there mainly to enhance fuel economy. Mild hybrids cannot run on electric motor alone. However, more expensive full hybrids have larger batteries and stronger electric motors that can fully power the car for short distances. Hybrids do not plug into the grid to recharge, instead they use regenerative braking. Regenerative braking captures energy that gas-powered cars lose through heat in the brake pads and the rotors, and the electric motor acts as a generator, the energy that can then be stored within the battery. In 1997, the Toyota Prius became the first mass-produced hybrid and has remained one of the most popular on the market. Additionally, Toyota offers electric motor-based renditions of the Camry and the Corolla, while Ford has its Escape. Now, if you're looking for more luxury, I consider the Lexus LS Hybrid or the Audi RS7 Sportsback, which is a little closer to that six-figure price. Next, we have plug-in hybrid electric vehicles. These are similar to hybrids in that they have both a fuel-powered engine and the battery-powered electric motor, but both components are typically bigger. They can drive longer distances on just electricity, ranging from 15 to 60 plus miles. However, when the battery is depleted or during rapid acceleration, the plug-in hybrid's turtle combustion engine does all the work and travels on the power of gas. Plug-in hybrids can be charged in multiple different ways. Like hybrid electric vehicles, regenerative braking is one option, but they can also be charged by plugging in. Fuel economy improves by consistently plugging into charge, and this optimizes the chances of using an all-electric range. Without this, the fuel economy is about the same as a similar-sized hybrid EV. Plugins generally have a total range of 200 to 640 miles, and base prices for plugins range from 32,000 for the Honda Clarity plug-in hybrid to about 155,000 for the Polestar, simply named One. Parallel hybrids connect both motor and engine to the wheels through mechanical coupling, allowing both to maintain direct control over the wheels. In contrast, series hybrids give only the electric motor direct control over the wheels. This means that they are more common among the plug-in in variety. The internal combustion engine is left to power the motor unless the battery becomes depleted and a switch is needed. Hey, that rhymes. Lastly, fuel cell vehicles convert hydrogen gas stored in the tank into electricity to power the electric motor. So once you're filled up at a hydrogen refueling station, you'll likely be able to drive for more than 300 miles. They are still in the early stages with the main manufacturers being Honda's Clarity FC, Toyota's Mari 2, and Hyundai's Nexo. Anyway, that's all we have for you on this week's wrap-up. Make sure to comment on your favorite story. I hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you next week.